Thank, thank you. Yes, this is working. Yes. Um, hi, guys. My name is Tiffany Chan, and I'm from Deloitte Digital. And um, I started Drupal just last year when I was an intern at Deloitte Digital. And so it was, it, this concept is very new for me. And I found Drupal very fascinating because like my university taught me a very manual like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code. So when I, when I was like given Drupal, I was like, wow, what's this thing? So yes, it's a very exciting thing. And learning Drupal for the first time was very hard and I wouldn't be able to stand here if it wasn't for my colleague, um, Adam Malone, Christopher Hopper, Henry Tran, and Aaron Nicole. So I would like to thank them for this presentation. So um, let's just move on to this presentation. Um, so um, when I was an intern, I was placed in an e-commerce project. And this project is related to a telecommunication company. And their objective their objective is like they want to create a new website for their company. So this means that we need to move their entire product from the old website to the new website. Um, I'm not talking about just like a couple of products. I'm talking about hundreds of products, like maybe even like maybe a thousand. And in this project, I was provided a JSON as a type of data format for this migration. And the products include broadbands, NBN, bundles. So this is the, the range of products that they offer. So because there are hundreds of products needed to be migrated, we need to build an easy solution for this uh, migration. So this telecommunication company used commerce to build their website. So have, has anyone here used commerce before? Oh, a few people there. So if anyone haven't uh, used commerce yet, it's actually a solution for building your e-commerce website. And so you can just create your product type and attribute um, custom. And you can also dynamically change your display product and also your um, attributes very easily and it's very flexible too um, to do your orders and also displaying the product itself and best of all you don't have to create your own payment methods for this and so which is why they chose this telco company chose commerce so the question then arises of how to migrate products effectively um, because there's just too many products to migrate manually it, it's time consuming it's a waste of energy and very expensive to manually migrate the products. So before we start doing some coding um, or making modules, so I wanna introduce you to three terminologies about commerce. Um, so product type is the kind of product of that telco company. So for example, here you can see that um, the product type is broadbands. Um, bundles and mobile broadband. So it's just, the, it's, it's just the, what they're selling. So product attribute is the characteristic of the product. And this can be seen in the JSON at the key value pair. And also the last one is product variation. Um, it's actually the specific instance for each of every product. For, so for example, in this, um, in this demo, I'll be, showing, I'll be showing you later. I'll be using bundles, which is the middle one. Um, there's 120 different variations of bundles. So just imagine like bundle one, bundle two, bundle three. So that's what product variation is. And I know as a beginner, it's very confusing to, um, to know what, what this terminology is because believe me, or believe me I've been there. So um, yeah, this is a very simple way to um, sum, summarize product type, variation, and attributes. So before, before we do anything, we have to set up the commerce website. Um, we have to make sure that the store, currency, and product type exist before we do anything. And it's very important because I got stuck with this for a long time. Um, we have to create a product type, which um, in the other, um, the, the other slide, it's like the bundles. 
So for example, if you want to create a bundle product type, you have to go to the configuration and just create a simple bundle product type. This is important because um, this defines what they're selling. And um, this doesn't have, this doesn't, if you don't, if you forgot to do this, it won't show up in any of the error message. Very important. So next thing is that um, creating product attribute. And as mentioned before, product attribute is basically the characteristic of the product. And the, so the difference between product attributes and other things, like let's say the IDs and like the name, is that product attribute has multiple values to choose from. So for example, in this example, we have access technology. And in this, in this particular example, we can choose different types of access technology. I'll be showing you later of this um, different options, but we cannot, this is not the same as ID because ID, we can't choose from multiple values because ID is just predefined. It's, um, let's say for example, ID one, ID two, ID three. So we can't choose from it. So we have to create it from the start. So yes. Next one is after defining the product type and other configuration, we need to um, create the products. So this is important because we need to create the products and we need to define it because we need to see the variations. So if you create the products, you'll see that there's uh, variation tabs and we can actually see that there's nothing currently. So our goal here, if you don't understand what I'm, like, what I'm talking about today, <laughs> um, is to get the JSON, um, which has been provided with the telco company, get the JSON data and just put everything you wanna put in this variations tab. Very easy, so yeah. So now I'll be explaining you how to create the modules. So we will be creating the module just for this migration commerce. And this is just a basic presentation. So I won't be covering everything about this um, code, but I'll be trying my best to um, explain everything, hopefully. So um, for this module, we need three external modules, which are migrate plus, migrate tools, and migrate. And you need to doubt you need to do a composer require for migrate plus and migrate tools because uh, migrate um, because migrate is already in the course, so you don't need to do that. So, after doing the basic things like creating module info, info YAML dot module file, and so on, um, we need to create two things. So basically, we need to create group migration configuration and the product configuration. So that's it. So for example, in this example, um, the group migration would be commerce bundles. And it will be, and the first one will be used in the product configuration entity, which is commerce bundles, which is the, um, the example below, the one highlighted in the screenshot. So I'll be talking about what to put inside of this product configuration entity. And this is what the first of the third section looks like for the product configuration entity. So there are three things here to note that in order to migrate stuff, you need to um, know about source, you need to know about destination, and you need to know about process. So let me repeat that, source, des destination, and process. So what is source? I got very confused when I first started. Like, what is source? It's just like a, like a label field. Everything is in there. But basically, um, the big section down, like the fields, the fields in the screenshot, it's actually what you want to get from the JSON. So for example, um, name equals to ID, label equals to ID. It means that I want to get the ID from the JSON which is next to it, which is ID equals to NBN01 underscore underscore. So that is the ID that I wanna get. And sometimes we don't need to use all the information from the JSON. So you can pick 
just which one you want to use for this. Because in reality, you don't want to be displaying every information to the customer. And there's also other things in the source, which is like what kind of, um, what kind of data type, data format you're using, which is JSON in this, and also the URL, and like um, constants like the string, the type of um, what the bundles, the, also the identifier depth. In my um, example, it will be a, like, uh, like only one identifier depth for the JSON because it makes it easier. So yeah, um, that's the source. So the second part would be destination. So destination is pretty straightforward because we want to migrate it to the product variation. We need to use this entity commerce product variation so it can be migrated. And it's already, it's already made this plugin, so you don't need to like stress about how to use this. So the third and final one is process. And this, the process is how to get from the source, which we just talked earlier, and display it at Drupal. So if you can see here, so this is just the same thing, like this um, screenshot is the same screenshot as this one, but I just added source next to it, with, which we just um, explained earlier. So basically, we're just like mapping things into, into the process from the source. So for example, here, we can see that name is mapped to SKU, um, with a plugin called skip on empty. So it means like, it basically means um, take, take ID from the, from the source and, also, and see what, what it is inside. And after you see what's inside, check if it's empty. If it's not empty, then push it to the Drupal commerce website. This also applies to this also applies to um, title, which is taken from description, and product ID. You see that, you might see that the plugin is a little bit different. It's not skip on empty. Um, this is um, a custom plugin I made, and it, this also applies to commerce price too. So basically, commerce product is to allow it to select the right product ID while commerce price is actually to set the price and currency code. So we're just using, using the plugins, which is what you want to do for the, for the data. So what you want to do with the data you, you have. And also, um, for attributes, we need to do entity lookup before, um, before we do anything with this, because um, they need to look up the... Um, the, the list that they generated from this um, data. It's, if this seems like confusing, I'll be showing you the demonstration later. So next one. Executing the migration is pretty simple. You just need to do a drush migrate status to check the status. And um, you can choose the product type the product you want to migrate, and also type the trash migrate import. And there are also useful commands, such as rollback, and also migrate reset status. I find migrate reset status to be very important because um, there's not a lot of documentation. Like, let's say you got stuck, and the status got stuck in, in importing. You can just reset it, and it will go back to idle. So when you open the product variations, you can see the list of the items here. And I'll be showing you the demonstration. So if I go to my commerce, and this is my commerce uh, module, and if I go to product, um, you see that I created a bundle, and currently there's nothing inside, right? And if you can see, the product attributes, um, we, I created a product attribute called access technology, and 
I, I didn't put anything first. I just put one, one um, value, and it automatically like, populates it for me. So if you see again the variations, and if you go to your terminal, and you just type drush migrate status, this will show you how many, um, how many bun items are in your JSON. And it will show what, um, how many is unprocessed and how many are processed. And this also applies to if you update stuff, it will show how many items are updated and how many items are not updated. You just need to type the migrate import. Oh, okay. I have a backup. Yes, so if I just open this. And I'll just fast forward. So, yep, there's nothing in this variation yet. And if I just first, um, fast forward to this. So as you can see, I did the migration status. And um, I, there's 122 unprocessed items. And if I did a migrate import, um, it won't say it. It won't say anything. So don't panic if if doesn't show you anything. Like there's no like successful message. And if you check the status again, you'll see that um, it's imported already. And if you go check your um, check your website, you can see that all the variations are all there. And if you don't see some of the tabs, like for example, where's the description? Like, where's some tabs? It's all there already. It's, it's just too, too many things to be displayed at the front. So if you go inside of each of the um, variations, you see the details there. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, we have um, a time for a couple of questions, so if you want to raise your hand, I'll come and handle the mic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I was wondering if you had, like, how many uh, things you imported? Like, if the files were too big or if the, just like it was too much content, if there was a strategy to break down the migrations or, or if, or, or you did everything in one go? Uh, just basically, like, if there is a lot of content to migrate, if you have a strategy for that. If there's no content to migrate? No, if, if there is too much, like, oh, a lot of much? content, yes. Like, how many, how many is too much? A million, a well, hundred thousand, you know, like a very big import. Well, uh, I only try it with a uh, hundred of products, mm -hmm. each um, product type. So if, if you're like saying like, uh, like 10,000, maybe it will slow down the importing, but um, I'm sure it still works, but it, it will just very slow. You know, mm. when you type the drush migrate import, it will be very slow. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, I would like to maybe respond yeah. to the comment here as well. Like when you have lots of content, let's say 100,000, like basically all of your content won't be just one type, yeah. so when you do your migration, you can just split that into your bundles. So for example, if you have like 10 content types, you will have 10 YAML files with 10 configurations. So when you do the migration, it will be split between those 10. So it's not like all, they're all in one go. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Any more questions? Thank you. Oh, here you go. One more. Last one. I'm just curious, how did rollback go when you rolled back your migration? Yeah, so we just um, typed drush rollback, as mentioned here. So just drush migrate rollback of, of that product. And it did everything you wanted to and nothing else? 
You didn't have any problems with it? Oh, I don't know why. Like, I couldn't do it just now. Um, maybe it's the network issue. But um, usually, it, it's OK. It, it will just disappear. So you were only importing product variations, not products. Is that correct? Yeah, product variations, not products. So your product variations, you already knew what the product ID was going to be? Sorry? You already knew what the product ID would be? Product I oh um product ID yeah um so it's already it's already there so I just need to take it okay. yeah from and you you made the products without using migrate correct? yeah oh no no so I create the product on itself like manually yes and then like after I create the products I um, go to the variations tab and look look at it and do the do the commands. And after the commands, it will appear in the variations tab. So we still have to do the products manually. Right. So the, you created the products manually, and then yeah. you migrated in the product variations. Yeah. So that when you did a rollback of product variations, you only rolled back the variations and not the products yeah. as so well. Yeah. So when you That's do a rollback. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Yes. OK. Cool. Thank you, Tiffany. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Don't forget to leave your feedback on the website and we'll be back in uh, two or three minutes. <laughs>